Hi, uh, hi everybody. I, uh, in these uh, in these days, I I hope you are you and your family are safe uh, in these Corona quarantine days and take care of yourself. Uh, today I will start with the math uh, three sixty seven online lecture online lecture one uh, i will continue uh, with the course that we stopped uh, in the class so today's topics is uh, the serial theorems serial theorems okay uh, Let's see, let's remember, what, what was the Lagrange theorem? Do, do you remember Lagrange theorem? Lagrange theorem. It was saying that uh, if we have a finite group, if uh, G is a finite group, finite group, and uh, H is a subgroup of, H is a subgroup, of G, then uh, then the order of G is equal to the index of G, index of G times the uh, the order of H. Namely, this index of G is the number of left cosets of H or right cosets. It's the same thing. The number is the same. So. So how about this converse? So namely, what, what it says, if you have a subgroup, if in a finite group, if you have a subgroup, then it is uh, the order of uh, H, order of H divides the order of G. So how about the uh, converse? So namely, if suppose uh, we have an integer dividing the order of G, then is there a is there a subgroup H in G such that the uh, order of H is equal to M? That's the question. Okay, so we will, in general, the answer is no. Answer is no. Uh, here's an example. If you consider, for example, uh, let's take uh, the, the easiest example that I, I can remember is that if you look at the symmetric group S5, its order is five factorial, which is 120, 20, and its alternating subgroup A5 is uh, six hundred, uh, 60, and uh, this group A5 uh, is simple. We did not cover this, but simple that means uh, it has no non-trivial uh, complete sub, uh, normal subgroups. N namely, if n is a normal subgroup of A5, then uh, either the order of n is one or 60. And another fact is that, which can be shown that if in any group, in any group, if the index of, uh, a group is two, then uh, this subgroup is uh, must be normal. So, therefore, uh, so for example, thirty divides the order of a five, which is sixty. Uh, but a five has no subgroup of index uh, subgroup of order uh, 
and the no subgroup uh, H in a five uh, with the index of H is 30, uh, or order of H is 30, because otherwise the index, uh, index of uh, H uh, if there is such an H, then the index of H would be two, that would be normal, and it, that, that would contradict to the simplicity of A5. Anyway, uh, this is just the side information, but uh, we have a partial uh, answer to, to this question that we discussed above, namely this question. question. Uh, the, here is a partial, partial answer. It says uh, we have a partial an answer. We will give. St we will state this uh, as a theorem. For this, let me first define this. Uh, let me give a definition. A group, of, a finite group, finite group G is called. So before, let uh, P be a prime number. So a group is called a P group if uh, if the order of G is uh, the P to the R for some R. Or the, the or equivalent condition is that uh, which I will not uh, include, but I will not prove. Equivalent condition is that uh, every element of G has uh, prime has order prime power. And uh, well, this is the first definition. Definition one and definition two. Uh, so let uh, definition two. The GBA finite group finite group with uh, and P be an a uh, prime number prime number uh, suppose that P is a subgroup of uh, this capital P is a subgroup of G, uh, and uh, suppose that the order of P is some P to the R, so that the P to the R divides uh, the order of G. So, and uh, P to the R plus one, suppose that does not divide uh, the order of G. Then this uh, subgroup is called, then P is called, called the uh, zero P subgroup. Of G. So zero P subgroup is a P group. Is a, is a P group in particular. So here's an example. Example. Let's consider, so if the first example, the, if the order of G is some P to the R for some R, uh, then um, P to, uh, zero P subgroup, or sometimes it is uh, it's written like this P zero subgroup. It's the same thing. Uh, is G itself, and another example, the easiest example. Let's consider S three. Uh, S three is remember it consists of the identity permutation and transposition one two, one three, transposition two three. 
one, two, three, and one, three, two. So namely, uh, this this is the transposition, uh, the, the permutation maps this one, two, one, two is, remember, one, two means this permutation. One goes to two goes to one and three goes to three, for example. So the order of uh, S3 is, is six, which is two times three. So that uh, if you look at this subgroup P1, this identity and the one, two, this is a subgroup, uh, P2, identity and uh, one, three is also a subgroup in a transposition. Also P3 is uh, E and uh, the other element is two, three. So these are, uh, this P1, P2, P3 are, uh, zero two subgroups. Of uh, S3. So remember this uh, order of zero, uh, zero two subgroup must be two, and order of zero three subgroup must be three, the highest power. And uh, if you look at this subgroup, let's say Q, which is the identity one, two, three, uh, and one, three, two. Actually, this, this is a special name, of course. Let me just write this as it was a, a three, namely the alternating group. This is a zero three subgroup of uh, S3. So the highest power of three is two. Uh, th uh, highest power of three dividing S3 is one. Okay, these are examples. Now, so as an exercise, uh, let, let me give you as an as a, you do the same thing for uh, find zero, uh, I, in a moment, I will give the existence zero two uh, subgroups of uh, or one zero two subgroup of uh, S four. Okay. Okay. Here is a theorem. This is the uh, as we promised. This is the first zero uh, theorem. First zero theorem. This is the most important, perhaps. It says uh, if G is a finite group, oops. So if G is a finite group, if it is a finite group, uh, P is a prime, prime with uh, P to the R divides the order of G and P to the R plus one does not divide the order of G. Then, uh, then uh, there is a subgroup in G with uh, the order of P is, capital of P is P to the R. So namely, G has a pillow, uh, a zero P subgroup, pillow C subgroup. <laughs> okay. So namely, every, uh, finite group has a has a zero subgroup, zero p subgroup. 
So I will not uh, prove this theorem, but the proof is you can read this from the uh, Malik's books, for example. It is it uses the classic equa equation that we proved in the class. I urge you to read it. Uh, let's see what is next. This is the first one. Let's do the second uh, zero, second zero theorem. So the first theorem says, <coughs> if, uh, so let's see, as an, uh, as an example, let me give an example. Uh, let's say if G is, if the order of G, let's say uh, three to the five times, uh, seven to the four times uh, five, for example, then uh, then there, is, there are subgroups. This, <coughs> this theorem tells us that there is, a, there is a subgroup P in G such that, let's call this P1. Uh, the order of P1 is uh, three to the five. There is another subgroup P2 in G such that the order of P2 is uh, five. And uh, there is another subgroup. This is uh, another subgroup in G such that the order of P3 is uh, seven to the four. Namely, this is zero three subgroup. So there is a zero five subgroup, and this is zero uh, seven subgroup. So you may ask, well, how about other primes? If, for example, if uh, how about zero two subgroup? Zero two subgroup is just uh, the trivial group, zero two or zero uh, eleven subgroup or any other prime prime any other than three, five, seven, uh, zero P subgroup is, is a trivial group. Okay, let, let's uh, do the second zero theorem. Perhaps this is fast, but you should review these, uh, you should read this, uh, stop the video and then think about this. More. Okay, so this is second zero theorem. Uh, second zero theorem says if uh, the any two zero subgroups, zero p subgroups, are conjugate to each other. So, okay, uh, here is the precise uh, statement. So let, let G be a finite group. P be a prime. Then uh, any two zero P subgroups of G are conjugate. Namely, that, what does it say? Namely, if uh, P and Q are subgroups in G with uh, uh, the order of P and the order of Q are the same, and this is P to the R, and P to the R plus one does not divide G. So, so that P and G are zero P subgroups, then, then there is an element in the group G such that 
this Q, the group Q is equal to G P G inverse. So the conjugation. So remember, this is the, the all the uh, this group, uh, this group G, uh, the the group consisting of G X G in inverse such that X is in P. Okay, in into zero two subgroups are conjugate. So for example, let's go uh, up a little bit. So without going up, let me write once again. So example is that, uh, again, let's look at about example, then our P1 in S3, remember it was the identity and the one two and uh, another zero two subgroup is identity and one three and find the uh, so so according to this theorem uh, second zero theorem these two subgroups are conjugate and how do we do that <coughs> for example so let's if if you take g to be uh, element conjugating one three to one, mapping one three to one two. So, for example, uh, two three. For example, then if you look at the conjugate of this p two, and the inverse of two three is is also two three. This is uh, the the conjugate of conjugation of Let's write like this. It's the conjugation of identity with this uh, element is identity. And if you conjugate this two, three, uh, one, if you conjugate one, three by two, three, this is, remember, you look at where one goes to one under this permutation, one goes to one and three goes to two. And this is precisely the subgroup P1. Okay. You can, uh, you should find, uh, find, uh, let's say, G1, G2 in, uh, just, just G1 in, uh, in G such that G is S3, of course, such that G1 times uh, P3, G1 inverse P1. Find such an element uh, by yourself. So an element conjugating P3 to P1. Okay, next. Next is the zero, third zero theorem. This is, uh, this theorem is about the number of uh, zero P subgroups of G. So let, uh, the, suppose that the order of G is P to the R times M. So this is the P to the R is the highest power of, uh, highest power of P dividing uh, order of G. Uh, we may state this like this. The greatest, also the greatest common divisor of P and M is one. So namely there is no uh, factor P in M. Or, or P does not divide M, if you like. You can also state it like that, P does not divide M. Uh, then the number of, the number of, if you look at the number of zero P subgroups, there's at, there is at least one by the theorem of the first zero theorem, there's at least one uh, zero P subgroup. The number, uh, number N P, of zero, zero P subgroups 
of G is uh, is on this form is in this form like this. It is one plus KP for some K. Namely, the number of uh, zero P subgroups is congruent to one modular uh, modular P. So that for some P is greater than could be zero. And also, uh, one more thing is that, and this uh, this number of silo P subgroups divides the order of G. That's there are two state uh, conclusions. One is that uh, the number uh, of silo P subgroups is congruent to one modulo P, and the second is that the number of silo P subgroups divides the order of G. This is useful. Uh, in many examples, uh, in problems. So here is a corollary of the statement is that corollary that if G has a unique, if the, uh, the corollary of these three uh, zero theorems, if G has a unique unique zero p subgroup then uh, it is normal so here is a proof so let uh, P be a zero P subgroup of G then uh, and let G be an element in uh, G. So we will show that the conjugate of P with G is equal to P. Then, uh, then the order of G, P, G inverse is the same. Uh, this group is isomorphic to P in, in general. In general, if H is a subgroup of G and G is, in, is an element, then the uh, it doesn't matter if it's a finite group or infinite group. Then, uh, then if you define a map from H to G H G inverse, like this, phi of H is G H G inverse, this is an isomorphism. This is an isomorphism. In, in particular, it is a, uh, phi is an isomorphism. In particular, it's a one to, it's one to one, one to one and one to one. So that the, the conjugate of this p with g is equal to the this highest power p to the r, which is the order of p. Uh, but uh, so this now p and uh, this g p g inverse are zero p subgroups. By assumption. G has a unique zero P subgroup. Therefore, this zero P subgroup must be equal to P. N namely, it says that uh, P is normal in G. That's the end of the proof. Okay. So here's an example. Let's do and application uh, applications of uh, these theorems. The first application is uh, so the, let's look at S three. In S three, uh, the order of S three is uh, remember order of S three is 
six, which is two times three. So that number of v above, uh, we showed that there is there are three pseudo two subgroups. So that in this case, n two is three, which divides six, and also it is of the form. So this, uh, remember, uh, the third pseudo theorem says that this n three must divide the order of g uh, order of s three, so that it divides six. And also, it is of the form uh, one plus two k, two times one. It's in that form. Okay. So how about n three? N three can be. Uh, it should be. There's at least one. It should be of the form one plus three times k. So it can be. Uh, so number of zero three subgroups can be uh, one or four, but only one divides six. So therefore, so four, four so, uh, so, sorry. So this four does not divide six. Therefore, uh, this N3 must be one. <coughs> so there's a unique zero uh, three subgroups in, in S, uh, S3. There is unique. So three subgroup in uh, S three, and this zero uh, three subgroup is uh, is A three only. A three is isomorphic to cyclic group of order uh, three. And second is that so I will try to I, I will put these files PDF files uh, on the website and I will let you know where that is. You, you can also read from here. Okay. Second is that suppose that. Uh, the order of G is 45 and 45 is, uh, is it nine times five times nine. So it is three squared times five. So that uh, let's look at, let's consider the zero, let's look at the zero uh, three subgroups. Consider zero three subgroups. You know, three subgroups. Okay, so N three is uh, N three is uh, should be in the form one plus three k. So and also it should divide and three should divide uh, forty five, so that it can be since it is in this form it is it can be one four seven ten uh, thirteen. 16, 19, 22, oops, 22, cannot write, 22, uh, etc. So the only, uh, Only thing 22, etc. You can go like this until uh, 40. You don't need to go until 45. But the only one divides uh, among these numbers, only uh, one divides 45, so that n3 must be one, so that zero uh, three subgroup uh, p is normal. In G, so in particular, it is uh, in particular the group of order uh, forty-five cannot be simple. Namely, it has a normal subgroup. 
Okay, that's, this is the end of uh, the first lectures.